Hey, this is Neely with Neely on Nutrition, registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified health coach. And I am delighted because I have a special guest with me today. I have a client of mine that I worked with. We recently um, had our 12 um, sessions together. And um, so she um, agreed to be on here because she just has a really good story to tell. So her name is Debbie Tudor. And Debbie, um, tell, tell, tell us, what, what do you do? I'm a licensed professional counselor and author. Um, my specialty is treating adult children of narcissistic parents. And I've written a book that has sold worldwide on that topic and just really enjoy that and just general counseling. Yeah, excellent. We started working together last August. After what was going on in your life? What prompted you to reach out to me? Um, Neely, I was at my wit's end. I had just been to the doctor, gotten a diabetes diagnosis, um, very high A1C, and I was tired. I was having to have a nap every day, and I just couldn't figure it out. And I'm a researcher by nature, and I really thought that I could do this on my own. And so I read about keto, and when I tried keto, I gained cholesterol numbers that were sky high. And when I tried ca cutting calories, I was starving all the time and it wasn't sustainable and I didn't even lose weight anyway. So I was really just at the point where stepping on the scale was exhausting. I never knew what I was going to find and I didn't know what to do. And you had coached my husband years ago and very successfully and he has kept his weight off. And so I turned to you. Very good. What, what changes did you make? You really calmed me down. And I tend to get very um, stressed about things. And if I do one thing, then I think six things must be better. And so I had an attitude of all or nothing. And you really helped calm me down and, and show me how to change things in small steps. So I am... Um, I quit depending on the scale. I, I quit weighing eventually. I don't weigh anymore. And I started thinking about how did I feel? And you really had me emphasize on how food made me feel and different foods and try that out. And you also taught me that no food is forbidden and you did not restrict foods. In, other, in the opposite way, you encouraged foods, plenty of protein, reasonable healthy carbs and so those are the changes we made and they sound so simple and nobody who hasn't been through your program can just take those things and do it. It's very um, specific to how you approached it with me. Yeah. Every one of my clients has different needs. And like you were talking about keto, you tried keto and I mean, it may work and I say work for getting some weight off for, for some people, but the sustainability and I think you were ready for that more sustainable approach. Exactly. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about the not the the small changes and not you called it white knuckling. The small changes. What I've always done is what I think the majority of people do when they're trying to lose weight. What I've always done is restrict, restrict, restrict. And when you do that, you don't sleep because you're hungry, and you can do it for a day or maybe a week, but you can't sustain that. And that's white knuckling. It's so stressful and negative. And what we did instead was just say, you would tell me, well, try um, adding some protein to your snack. And you would give me good ideas for those. Or you would say, add one extra push up to your exercise routine. And it was very easy. And anything that is easy, you get a good endorphin rush and you're like, I can do this rather than trying to do 60 things and throwing up your hands because you can't. And I remember that too, because you, as you mentioned in your introduction that you have a tendency to, it's like if, if a little bit is good, more is, is better. So kind of like reeling you back in to make those small changes. Talk to me about adding the protein. I came to you with the belief that carbs are bad and if you just get rid of carbs you'd have this magic 
weight loss and it'd be forever. And I mean, it's typical keto thinking. And what you taught me was to nourish my body instead of restrict and starve and punish it. And so I, and, and it wasn't anything, you didn't make me do anything severe, like write down how many protein grams or anything like that. We just played with it. You just said, try these foods. You gave me a list of foods that had, were high protein and there were so many of them, it was easy to incorporate them into my diet. And there was a learning curve, but once I figured out several foods that were high protein or how to combine foods, like um, if a meal is short on protein, I'll chop up some fruit and put it in cottage cheese and that bumps it up. So just ideas like that made it just so much easier to get the protein. And that is when my body really changed. It's when I started being mindful about protein. Can you describe what the protein did for you? It, it seemed to give me more energy. Like I said, when I started with you, I was exhausted after lunch, had to have a nap, things like that. So more energy and just, I, I don't know what it did for me scientifically, but I started having muscle that was replacing fat, not necessarily a drop on the scale because muscle also weighs, but there was some drop on the scale. And most of all, my body changed, my blood sugar went down, uh, my cholesterol dropped, everything changed just by that. I didn't restrict anything. If I wanted a piece of pie on the holidays, I had it, but just getting enough protein was a huge change and it worked so well. And I don't know what the, the magic is to it, but it just does such a great thing. And, and I recommend, I've said before, 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal, you know, spread out during the day through your meals, but especially that morning routine. And um, speaking of that, I want to brag on you for a minute. Um, I love oatmeal, but it, um, instant oatmeal would shoot my blood sugar way up. So I couldn't do it. And I had just given up. And you took an overnight oats recipe that you had and you tweaked it until it worked for my blood sugar. And that seems like such a little thing, but it's a huge thing. So that is my breakfast many mornings a week. And I wouldn't have begun to know how to do that. That was something that you know with your expertise. And I love my overnight oats. I know. Very good. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're not on the metformin now, right? I am not. After we uh, did 90 days of work together, I went back for my test results. The A1C had dropped um, more than a point. It was down in a better, much better range, and the doctor saw no reason for me to stay on metformin. So that was a victory. Yeah, that's great. That's so awesome. Can you talk to me about the scale? I know we've talked about it. So you don't weigh yourself now, because I know that some people have this love-hate relationship with it, and I get that totally. But how did that change for you? I journaled about this for a long time and I tried to write, come up with reasons to weigh and I couldn't come up with any. <laughs> if this is going to be a lifetime um, journey and not some goal that I'm gonna reach and then quit, then I didn't see any need to do it. If I weighed, it was either, yay, I've lost weight. I can feel good now and go eat 40 hot dogs. <laughs> and if I hadn't lost, it was like, throw up my hands, give up, oh, it's not working. It took me a long time, and you're encouraging, to get away from the focus on the outer, the numbers, and to focus instead on the inner, how do I feel, and to let go of what size my body might be, and just go by how do I feel. And if I'm doing my routine every day, getting a little exercise, eating mostly healthy with some splurges, then I'm a success, and I don't need a number to tell me that I am or I'm not. So where it lands, it lands. I know over the years and myself, because I had a history before I changed careers of issues with my weight and somebody asked, you know, how are you doing? Well, hang on a second. Let me jump on the scale and I'll tell you. And it is, it's, it's, yeah, not helpful at all. Very good. 
So what's in store for you now moving forward? How are you going to continue these habits that you have formed? It's become second nature. Uh, I was trying out a goal journal where every day you mark down if you, you know, ate a healthy breakfast or whatever. And I did it for a while. And then I realized I don't need to do this anymore because it's just second nature. Um, after I eat lunch, I move somehow. I do a little bit of hit training or some jazzercise or a walk. It's, it's just what I do now. It's not anything I have to, to plan for. It's just become part of my lifestyle to live this way. And it's easy because there's no pressure. There's, there's no forbidden food anymore. Um, I think I said to you, and you loved it, that I feel like you helped me make peace with food. And it's true. Food is not an enemy. It's not something we have to avoid or use terms like forbidden or cheat. We don't have to do that. It's just food. What is the big deal? <laughs> you were talking about the, the habits that you have. And I had a recent interview with one of the experts on the best diets um, 2021 with the US News with Jill Weisenberger. And I loved how she talked about systems, having those systems in place. And that's what you have. It's, and I remember us talking about this, you would have lunch and then you would move, you know, it was like, so it's just become part of what you do and the habits that you form, creating those systems. And I think that for lifelong success, that is what is so very important. And what I didn't realize before is it doesn't have to be 30 minutes of sweaty cardio. It can be 10 minutes of getting your heart rate up a little bit. You don't have to change clothes. You don't have to put on certain shoes. You just have to do something, whether you dance or you march or whatever, you just have to do something. And I never saw that as enough before because if one is good, then six is better, right? So now I've realized that any little thing I do is a victory and all of it added up together is momentum toward a healthy life. Yeah, very good. Just to summarize quickly, you made the small changes, started having more protein with your meals, especially that morning meal, and um, you quit restricting, which is so important, and you started to get those habits in place that are just a part of your lifestyle now. And you have to have a mentality of patience, and self-love and it has to come from the, the desire to change has to come from not how you look but how you feel not the number on the scale but what kind of energy level you have and when you tune into that and you tune out of what society tries to tell women about their bodies then it just starts to fall into place how are you accepting i'm deliberately not doing actions that would cause me to judge myself. I'm not measuring. I'm not weighing. Now I know when I get my next checkup, they will weigh me at the doctors and that's fine. It's, it is what it is. I don't listen to BMI charts anymore. I don't um, look for shoulds. I should be this size or should be that size. What's important to me is that I'm healthy and I have energy. My blood sugar is in a reasonable range and that I can have a sweet every now and then, and it's fine. And I can live like this long-term, and that's the key, really. A lot of us have lost weight before and put it back on because you couldn't sustain what you were doing. But the acceptance comes from, I love myself, and I want myself to feel good. And you don't get that by beating yourself up or looking at a number or following a certain meal plan. It just doesn't happen. It has to be a mindset shift, which is what you've really helped me do. It is. It's just shifting that mindset. Uh, and I think because most of the women I work with are um, over, you know, peri and postmenopausal, sometimes I think you have to kind of go through, try those things, and then realize there's got to be a better way. Very good. Well, it has been so lovely having you. 
And I would um, normally ask how people can get in touch with you, but you've got full scan. You've got a waiting list. <laughs> no, no, no. I'd be glad to talk to you. Therapist <laughs> specialized. I'm sorry. I would be glad to put people on that waiting list. It's Rockwall, R O C K W A L L, dash or hyphen counseling.com is the website. And they can email me from there. Perfect. Yeah. Very good. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Debbie Tudor, a client of mine, seeing that the simple changes can have lasting results. If you're interested in working with me, there's a link in the description or just contact me on my website, neelyonnutrition.com. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.